Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Virtus here and welcome to my Unreal Engine 4 RPG series. In today's video we are going to be taking a quick look at how we can set up our project and also how we can put some of our assets for our project in there, take a look at some of the blueprints and just familiarise ourselves with the environment. So having said that, what we're going to do, first things first, I want you guys to open up the latest version of the engine that you have. For me that's going to be 4.16.2. Now keep in mind you guys can use a newer version of the engine than this um, and I'm also going to be going through the engines of the version as I record the series. So let's say in 10 videos time I might be working with 4.17, it's not going to make any difference, the series will not become outdated. So go ahead and click launch and then once we've done that give it a couple of minutes and then from there we can create a project. So what I want to do is I'm going to go to new project and for this role playing game I'm actually going to be using the third person template as I'm looking to get that over the shoulder kind of look and feel that I'm after. So once I've selected third person what I'm gonna do is over here I'm gonna go ahead and set my location. Now for me I don't necessarily want it to be in my C drive so I'm actually gonna put it into one of my extra hard drives and I'm just going to dump it in a folder called Unreal Projects so I'm gonna have to create that so just right click anywhere you like. My computer's a bit slow at the moment so Unreal projects and then I'm just going to open that up and then just select that folder and then there we go chuck it in there and then the name of our project for me this is simply going to be RPG um, project no spaces and then over here where we've got desktop and console maximum quality and starter content we're going to leave all of this exactly where it is so we are planning it for desktop and console we're not going to be worrying about a mobile version just now and then we're also going to be leaving it on maximum quality so we can get the best look and feel that we're after and lastly we are going to be using the starter content there is some brilliant stuff in there for our project so i'm going to leave that once you've done it, go ahead and just press create project and then it's going to take a couple of minutes for that to load up and get into the game. So while that's creating the project, we're also going to be doing something else. Now over the duration of the series, we're actually going to be using some of the Infinity Blade assets to create our levels, our characters, our weapons and so on. Now we are going to be adding other stuff on top, but the Infinity Blade stuff does give us a great foundation for an RPG game because it comes with some really cool levels, some cool characters and some cool weapons. So let me show you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to my marketplace and then if we just go into the marketplace home I'm going to show you how to get some of these. So normally it should just look like this. In the top right hand corner in the search panel just go ahead and type in Infinity blade and then just press enter to search that and then once you've done that you should get all of these pop up so we've got infinity blade effects infinity blade grasslands icelands weapons warriors firelands and adversaries now you can see that i already own all of these so what that means is i've basically downloaded them onto my computer and i can add them into the project now for you guys you might not have these downloaded on your computer already so what i'm going to do is quickly show you how you can do just that so the ones that we're going to be using is firelands grasslands icelands adversaries and we're not going to and we are also going to be using the weapons as well so first things first, hit Infinity Blade Grasslands first, give it a second to load up and then on the right hand side just to the right of the image it should say download. Once we've done that we can then go on and add that to the project. So if you wanted to you could add all of this into your project from your vault over here or you can also just do it from the marketplace, it's entirely up to you. Now I'm actually going to wait for my RPG project to load up completely before I do start adding anything to it. The reason why I'm going to wait for that is simply because I don't want it to mess around with the project while it's still in the process of creating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly skip the video for about 30 seconds, let this open up and then we can add it to the project. Okay, so this is all loaded up now. I've got my project and that is working perfectly. So if I go ahead and press play quickly, we should be able to get into our level and we can play around with our third person character. So once I've verified this is all good, this looks good to me, 
Once I've done this, what I'm going to do now is go ahead and add that stuff to our project. So I'm going to jump back over to the Epic Games launcher and then I'm simply going to grab my folders, uh, not my folders, but my project samples that I'm after. So first things first is going to be the Firelands one. So I'm going to press add to project and then you get this little window that comes up. All I'm going to do is scroll down and I'm going to look for my RPG project. So I'm just going to select that and then I'm going to add it to my uh, project. I'm going to do the same thing for the grasslands and then same thing for the icelands as well. And then I'm also going to do the same thing for adversaries and I'm also going to do the same thing for effects. And that should be pretty much all of them. So we've got weapons over there. Just add all of the Infinity Blade assets to our project. Now, bear in mind this is going to take a little while. There is loads and loads of files. So you can see here the Firelands one, that's 1.4 gigabytes. Grasslands, Icelands, they're all massive folders. So it may take about 15 minutes or something like that just to get it all in there. So in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a quick look at... Our project as a whole so we're going to take a look at breaking down this interface that we've got and also some of the blueprints that we've got so we know what is what and sort of how we can follow along later on so having said that by default you should just have this screen right now you should be able to have your viewport where you can fly around so you just click in there and then you can fly around and you've got your player and you've got this tiny little map here as well now keep in mind we are going to be completely replacing the level we're also going to be completely replacing the character. We're going to be making some changes to the camera system as well, so it won't be right behind them. There is lots coming up, and I really can't wait to get into this with you guys. So first things first, what I'm going to do is quickly show you how to get to some of your blueprints. So you've got your content browser in the bottom section here. Your content browser is essentially where you get access to all your files. It's basically a massive file manager for your project and it's only going to show you the stuff for this one particular project which is quite nice so if you want to get to some of these so first things first what i do advise you do is show or hide the sources panel from this it's going to give you a little asset tree of all of your assets now all of your infinity blade stuff will be adding into here over time it's not going to show up straight away like i said there is a whole bunch of files that need to go into here but for now the main folder that we're really going to be working with is third person bp so inside of this we've got our maps folder and we've got our blueprints folder if we open up the blueprints folder you can see we've got two things so we've got the third person game mode and we've got the third person character. If we go ahead and open up the third person character, we can see exactly what's in here. So basically this blueprint is essentially an, you know, a file with a little bit of code and inside of your viewport you've also got your character. So all of this code that we've got here is going to be affecting how our character plays, what he can and can't do and all of that good stuff. So we've got our event graph over here which is the code and then we've got the viewport which is pretty much the physical representation of this character so you can see I've got my character here and I've also got my camera behind it and if we was to simply move the camera it would also move the camera in the game so let me go ahead and show you that real quick just to show you how easily we can make changes to characters and blueprints and stuff inside of Unreal Engine 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drop it to about feet level for now and it's as simple as just clicking on it and then dragging up and down and then I'm going to close that and press play. And now I've done that you can see my camera angle is really really low now and it's that simple to mess around with our character. There's so much more that we can do with this. So what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to quickly move this back up to about a center position, well just above center position, hit compile and then press play and go back into that. And that was almost how it was before. And then the next thing that we've got is also the game mode. Now we're going to be creating another one of these or a couple of these later on for different game modes for our RPG game. So basically all this is doing is just giving us the parameters of our game mode. Um, so you can set the time, what they can and can't do in here. It's a bit of a complicated one and you will pick up the difference between each of the blueprints as we go through the series. There is a whole bunch for us to learn. So with this one we've got our class defaults. This is pretty much letting us choose um, our HUD class, our player class, and all of this is going to be defined by the game mode. So we have our game mode, 
and for each game mode we might want to have a different heads up display so that's all the graphics shown on the screen or we may also want to have a different player controller or a different player blueprint altogether. Um, the reason why you might want to do this is because let's say you've got a game mode where you've got magic and all of that good stuff you are only going to have that in your one player character whereas your normal game mode you wouldn't have it for this one you would and this is this game mode pretty much allows us to define which player character to use and then go from there it's a lot to take on guys and it's not that difficult like i said you're just going to pick up on it as we go out through the series now i'm not going to worry about showing you the rest of things just now i'm going to leave that over the next few videos hopefully you guys are ready you've got your project set up and you are ready to follow the series once again guys thanks for watching stay awesome Keep creating, your boy Virtus, signing out. This series was made possible by you guys supporting me on Patreon. If you want to help create other series like this, then check out my Patreon page in the link in the description.